for you custom conversions. And welcome to our first episode in our new series, How to Convert Your Car from Gas to Electric. This is going to be a 23 week series and uh, we're going to bring you a new episode every Wednesday. Well, in this first episode, we're going to talk about vehicle considerations. What are some of the things that you should consider when choosing a vehicle to convert to electric? I know a lot of people already know what they want to do. Uh, they may already own the vehicle, that type of thing. But let's just, for a moment, uh, talk about some of the pros and cons, so to speak, of a choice in a vehicle. Well, probably the number one consideration is weight. And I'm going to go into these a little more depth. I'm just going to talk to them here about them real quick. Uh, the other would be coefficient of drag, rolling resistance, and cost, as well as room for components. So, I mean, I've known people that have found some really small cars. The, the, the Miata is one. Um, it's, it can be done. We've done a lot of them. But they're a little more of a challenge, uh, the smaller cars, in order to find room for all the components and a spot for the components that is a little more ideal than just where you have space. So let's talk about weight first. Weight's very important because weight affects almost everything else. So to sum it up, weight affects range, performance, and cost. We'll talk more about weight in future videos. So let's take a quick look at uh, these charts right here to kind of help draw the picture of some of what we're talking about. Right here, you see it's like a seesaw. We have both uh, weight and cost. And as the, as the weight goes up, so the weight gets greater, the cost goes up. So one of the reasons weight would go up, one choice of vehicle, but a lot of times it's people trying to get more range, more range, more batteries, more batteries, more weight. So, uh, so down here at the bottom, you see as uh, the range increases, the cost goes up. Also, there's a little trade-off here between range and performance. So as the range goes up, the performance goes down. And that's because as you increase your range, you're going to increase the weight. The increased weight affects your performance. So you can see how they're all intertied. Weight, range, performance, and cost. All So let's day. talk about cost for a second. Cost is probably one of the greatest determiners for whether or not people will undertake this endeavor. Uh, and there's a lot of misinformation out there about how much it, you know, it's going to cost to do something like this. And most people are taken aback when they hear how much it really costs. And so if you look at what the kits cost out there from legitimate people, you'll find that basically it's about $20,000 on up. The typical conversion, and in the over eight years that we've been doing this, I can tell you the typical conversion costs between twenty dollars and $30,000. So a lot of you may tune out from, from this point forward saying, hey, that's more than I want to commit to. But there's ways to uh, mitigate some of that uh, in that range. And so one of them is the vehicle choice, and one is, it, is the range uh, requirement. And we're going to talk more about that when we talk about batteries and so forth. But one of the reasons that uh, the early Porsches and Volkswagens are popular is because they're less expensive to do. And the reason they're less expensive is they have fewer accessories. 
They don't have power steering. They don't have power brakes. Typically don't have air conditioning. And so these are things that the more items that you have to attend to, the greater the price tag. So getting rid of uh, those costs uh, saves you money. Uh, the little Miatas, for instance, they have power steering and power brakes. So they're going to cost more to do than the uh, uh, Bug or a Porsche or something like that. So anyway, those are just some things to, to consider. Like I said, all of these things are interrelated. So we'll be talking more about cost, more about weight, more about performance, more about range in you know, uh, future episodes these things will come up over and over. Another consideration is rolling resistance. And rolling resistance is just what it sounds. If you were to push your car, some will be harder to push than others. Uh, and weight can be a factor in that. Uh, wide tires versus narrow tires. Uh, wider tires typically have more rolling resistance than narrow tires. You can also get low rolling resistance tires and they make a huge difference. Um, All-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive. That added drivetrain creates additional rolling resistance and it really will affect your energy consumption. You'd be surprised. Underinflated tires. One of the top maintenance things you need to do with the, uh, an electric vehicle is maintain proper tire pressure. Uh, it's important in all cars, but when you have an inefficient internal combustion vehicle, you're not going to notice it so much if you're running underinflated. But you'll notice it more uh, on that efficient running electric vehicle. And another is uh, wheel alignment. Always recommend that uh, when you uh, convert your electric car after you've converted it, take it in and have an all wheel alignment. That can make a huge difference also. And so then there's coefficient of drag. And uh, the drag coefficient is basically the resistance of the uh, air as a vehicle passes through it. And uh, we've got a little clip for you that uh, will uh, give you more insights to drag coefficient.
so an important aspect in the decision process for me is, is the car fun to drive? And so that's something I recommend that you, you're going to have a fairly sizable investment, both in time and money, in converting a car. I would uh, recommend that you get one that you enjoy driving, and, uh, whether it's gas or electric. It'll be more fun when it's electric. But, uh, so make, make sure in, in all these considerations to weigh in that also. That you like the car as well as the uh, So each episode, I'm going to give you a recommendation. And that is, uh, it's, a, it's a little tidbit that uh, and uh, pay dividends. Um, and in this week's episode, my recommendation is that you purchase a vehicle, if, if, if you're purchasing a vehicle, that you purchase one that is running. Bottom line is that you want to have knowledge of the vehicle. So if it's a vehicle that you've owned for a long time, you're familiar with it, that's not a problem. Um, if it's a vehicle that's new to you, a lot of people will buy a vehicle that's not running because it's cheaper. You know, the, the price has been discounted because it's not running. The problem with that is the unknown. You don't know what condition is the drivetrain in, what condition are the brakes in, the steering, the suspension. You don't know. And so you get it, you convert it to electric, and you go on your test drive and you find out the brakes suck. Now, life is not going to be as pleasant as you were hoping it would be. And if it is a car that you are familiar with and everything, then I would also recommend that you do all of the maintenance items first. Because a reality is going to be that once you're finished converting the car and the, and the conversion is complete, you're going to want to drive that you're not going to want to have to do maintenance on it. So in addition to watching this series, uh, you might check some of our older videos for insights on uh, uh, some of the uh, finer details uh, that we're not going to go into in this series. Anyway, just a little overview of vehicle considerations, weight, coefficient of drag, rolling resistance, cost, fun to drive, the room for the components. We'll see you next Wednesday and thanks for watching.